We're following a developing story in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, you're taking a look right now at radar images of two major storms barreling towards the U.S. coast. NBC News' Chris Pallone is live in Lake Charles, Louisiana with the very latest. Hey, Chris. Yeah, hey there, Melissa. You know, for people who are used to dealing with hurricanes on a regular basis, even this is a rare event. You have two tropical systems that could theoretically hit the Gulf Coast area within the span of just a couple of days. And as you can see, Marco is somewhat fizzling out right now. Most of the precipitation is being kept uh, in the Florida Panhandle area and into Alabama as some high wind shear is knocking this tropical storm down. However, that's not what people here in Lafayette, Louisiana are worried about. They are watching Laura, which is down near Cuba at this point. It's expected to enter the Gulf of Mexico soon and could be striking here late Wednesday into Thursday, possibly as a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane. That could be anywhere from uh, this area all the way over into Texas, perhaps in the uh, uh, Houston or Corpus Christi area, so we're continuing to watch the forecast. As you mentioned earlier, this storm, these two storms, are having an effect on the world oil production and production here in the United States. There are more than 600 oil rigs and drilling facilities out in the Gulf. Uh, more than 100 of them have been shut down and evacuated as of yesterday. That had shut down about 58 percent of the Gulf's oil production. Melissa. Chris, thanks. Chris Pallone. Uh, let's check out some of the major refiners in the Gulf. Phillips 66, Exxon, Valera, Marathon Petroleum all moving to the upside today as the storms approach. Uh, so let, let's give this a whirl, Guy. You know, once upon a time, it's interesting because we didn't really see too much of a reaction in the oil markets or even in that gas markets. And once upon a time, we would have seen a sharp reaction there in addition to the oil stocks. So, you know, it's interesting. I think, the, to your point, 10 years ago, maybe yes, but now I think they've retrofitted so many of these these uh, these these businesses and, and these offshore rigs and stuff to the point where, you know, the storms are not that major in terms of what they can do to these places. With that said, you saw a big move in Valero today. If you look just technically, Valero 53 has been levels of support for a while now. But the name I want to talk about quickly, and Tim probably agrees, is Halliburton. If you go back a week or so ago, Goldman Sachs just added it to their conviction buy list. I think they put a $20 price target on it. And this stock has had this little slow, steady climb over the last couple of weeks. I think that's a name that can continue to rally, uh, not necessarily on this news, but in the environment that we find ourselves in. Tim, you're long, Halliburton. I'm long Schlumberger, which is of, of the two, probably the underperformer. But if you if you look at and coming out of the earnings cycle, both of these guys cut divs uh, and our balance sheet rationalization mode and, and actually um, free cash flow mode looking forward is, is part of the story. So it's a it's a slow re-rating. I, I do think as we start to see um, follow Brent prices, too, because they've been jammed here between 44 and 45 bucks really for the last six weeks. Um, this may be um, some spark to take you above what I think is really just a technical consolidation. But I agree with everybody here. Uh, you know, supply disruption has never been the trade here. Uh, it's certainly not a trade worth buying in the energy space when you're effectively in a bear market. It was during Katrina. I was trading back in 2005, um, and that put people out of business. Uh, but it's a different market, and, and I think that's well flagged. I do like the oil service guys with the best balance sheets in the U.S. for the long term. Uh, Karen, is there value in the sector or just value traps? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there is value. There's also balance sheet risk. So, you know, I, I agree with Tim. You go with the best and you go with the best balance sheets. But my mind sort of jumps to when I hear multiple storms of like a Home Depot. What kind of destruction is there on land and what, you know, what kind of rebuilding gets done? But I agree. It's, it's interesting how oil really itself, the commodity, didn't really react to this at all, though the, the refiners did.